Star Wars The Last Jedi, the most controversial Star Wars movie in history. This is a movie that's going to be talked about. You know, one thing I had to give them credit for, whether you like or dislike this movie, this is going to be the most talked about movie in the entire franchise so far. Because th there's such a, a, a split in the fandom right now. But what I want to discuss here, and I've talked about this a little bit in my Star Wars spoiler review, but I want to really get into it here, is Disney's direction with Star Wars. Is Disney dropping the ball with this franchise? And we're going to talk about the entire story of Disney actually buying Star Wars and how it's kind of evolved from there. Because I feel like with Last Jedi, you know, we're really... With Last Jedi... We're really seeing things that are really beginning to scare me. And we're seeing things about this movie and messages subliminally and not so subliminally in the movie that are kind of, I don't know, a little off-putting. So we're going to talk about all that here. But I'm not alone on this one. Please welcome, really, the first, he is actually the first Star Wars YouTuber that I ever subbed to. I guess now he's a former Star Wars YouTuber or whatever. Please welcome Dash. Hey, thanks for having me on. I think Star Wars, no, face Star Wars YouTube tuber turned heel. I think that's appropriate. Yes, but Disney turned heel on you first, bro. Right. See, what happened was you were inside that hut sleeping, then Disney came in and tried to kill you in your sleep, and then you defended yourself and brought the whole hut down. That's what can really we happened. Can we talk about the hut for a second? I, I, I love just how stupid that scene came across to me that Luke, the redeemer, we've talked about this, the man who is known for redeeming a man, his father who killed children, younglings had done the most vile crimes for 20 straight years as Vader. But Luke saw the good in him. And at the, <laughs> he, he like saw Kylo fart in his sleep. He's like, Oh, that's it. You're done. That's dark side. I didn't like the sound of that. You're it's over son. Like how, how is Luke, the Redeemer going to turn on his own nephew who he's training and responsible for. It is baffling. There are so many logic holes here. Like, wouldn't he go... Like, obviously he survived, right? He survived the hut coming down on him. Wouldn't he go and, like... First of all, before he even tried to kill him, wouldn't he go talk to, like, his sister and Han and be like, hey, um, we got a problem here. You know, wouldn't he try to talk to Ghost Yoda? Wouldn't he try to talk to maybe his ghost daddy who's been no, in no, this situation that, before? I love that you brought that up. <laughs> that, that's perfect. Uh, first of all, he's like, no, nah, Snoke did it. <laughs> Because you remember in the, the Force Awakens novel, Snoke, uh, Leia says, Snoke corrupted Ben to Han. And, and Han was confused, like, really, Snoke? And that was the big, you know, ooh, who's Snoke? What did he do? But nobody's like, oh, yeah, Luke kind of screwed the pooch. If the movie, though, showed Luke standing over Kylo Ren or Ben Solo as he was, and, you know, we heard, you know, the nasty dark sideness. But if we saw Hayden Christensen or Darth Vader corrupting Ben, like, you know, like Luke looked into his mind and he got this flash of Vader, like, pop out. And he went, oh, shit, Vader's totally taken over Ben. I could buy into that a lot more than, you know, hmm, I think he might be doing some dark side shit. Now I better end this real quick. Like, oh, my hand slipped and ignited my saber. And but just for a second... And he saw that <laughs> in his little cot looking up like, Uncle, no. Like, it is, it, oh, wow, that scene. You know, and it's funny because, like I said, he, you would think that he would at least consult the ghost and be like, Father, you've been down this road before. You were evil. You were good. How do we save this dude before he goes down the dark path? We didn't even get that. But it, it gets even dumber, Dash. And we're gonna we're off topic, but I don't care. What about the fact that this guy, Luke, he knew that, Ben took a bunch of his students. He knew that Snoke was out there. He knew this dude was out there somewhere in the unknown region or whatever, rubbing his hands together in his diamond-encrusted office chair. He knew he was building up an army with the Imperial Remnant, and yet he freaking left and went to Act 2 without even warning his sister. And then here's where it gets even dumber. This is where it gets even dumber. So he doesn't warn anybody that this dude, he, he knows that there's evil dark Jedi or whatever you want to call them, you know, evil dark side users, doesn't warn anyone about it, could be a problem in the future, and then he leaves behind a map, but when Ray goes to find him, he's like, do you think I hid out here for nothing? Then why did you leave a map with your former best friend, Lor Santeca? You can tell. That Ryan Johnson did not even, I don't know if he didn't watch Force Awakens, if he didn't pay attention. If, uh, this is mind-boggling to me, Dad. No, 
Ryan Johnson is true to Star Wars. Danny, wow. How can you say that? I mean, um, he probably got cliff notes in The Force Awakens. Look, the, the whole... Uh, it's like the Jedi way to just fuck off when things go awry, right? Remember when Yoda was like, oh, shit, Sidious is way too powerful. Instead of, you know, I got my ass kicked once instead of using this 900 year odd years of, of training and, you know, everything. I'm going to go to Dagobah and wait for the next generation. Kenobi, go wait on Tatooine. Watch that little boy for a good 19 years. Don't worry about it. Don't think about it too much. And then so Luke's like, oh, shit. Looks like this Snoke guy screwed up. I probably should not pop my lightsaber on Kylo. What should I do? He talks to Yoda. Yoda's like, go fuck off to Arcto for 20 years. Wait for the next generation to clean it up. It is the strangest thing that I didn't think oh. that they would r rinse repeat on such flawed logic. Well, well, the difference there, though, is that when it comes to Yoda, the Sith had taken over. I mean, the whole theme of, of that movie is that with Revenge of the Sith, they were in power and Palpatine controlled everything. He controlled the, the Senate. He controlled the uh, the armies. There was nothing Yoda could do. They had to wait for the rebellion to form. So there's a, in, in some ways, I understand that logic. In this case, though, the Republic was in control. Mon Mothma, Leia, all these people were already in power. Luke could have gone in there and be like, hey, listen, do something about this. And I know that there was that whole subplot about how Leia wanted to invade the unknown regions. They were worried about, you know, the First Order being a serious threat. All that stuff. But, I mean, it would have helped if maybe, you know, he would they would have figured something out. I don't know. The whole thing ha is filled with logic holes. What I wanted to talk to you about, though, is the the, the, the subtleties of, of Star Wars Episode Eight, The Last Jedi. And kind of, I've talked about this meta-narrative before. Now, I just want to say this, Dash, man. So, I like Force Awakens a lot, okay? A lot of folks don't like it. There are flaws in this movie. But I like it a lot, and I think it's a great first chapter. And I found out from somebody in the business the other day that, and this is bad, I thought, Dash, that when they formed the story group and they brought in JJ, that they had, like, the arcs for these characters already figured out. Like, they already had, like, not every detail of the story, but kind of they knew where Rey and Kylo and Poe were going to go and Finn. But it turns out that that's not the case. It turns out that Ryan Johnson had a, a clean slate to write whatever he wanted, and it turns out that when you come into the story group and you're able to write books, you get a clean slate. You don't even have to talk to anybody else if you don't want to. So what, what that means is this. That means that, and this is a major problem, and it's really in Last Jedi. If you're one of those fans that gets invested in all the extra stuff, the books, the comics, the video games, there is no connection. They try to make it connect when they want to, but this movie clearly... Clearly, this film clearly will tell you that Ryan Johnson didn't give a damn about any of the books, any of the extra material, or even the previous movie. And that, to me, is not what I originally thought the new canon was going to be. I thought the new canon was going to be consistent away from the EU formula. But it's just a new EU. So I'm wondering why they even decanonize everything anyways if they're going to do the same shit. I don't, look, I can't speak to the uh, legitimacy of somebody claiming Story Group doesn't thread because, I mean, they've openly said we th seed and thread stories together and they've done so and there are nods back. However, it could be on a lower level than we think. You know, people have less... I think it is on a People have less level. power. Like, you know, Pablo Hidalgo, you know, I have no love for that guy, but at least he's incredibly smart and, and well-read um, and... Let me finish that set thought. I have no love for him, by the way, that he speaks to fans consistently on Twitter because everybody goes to him and says, you know, you are the human holocron, but that's not even his job, right? Like he, he's not the be all and end all of, of the creative story. So we as the public have a, a skewed perception of what they do, but it could be on a much lower level than we actually physically give them credit for. And that's to our detriment, but also to the franchises. You're absolutely correct. The EU was messy. And I thought they would cherry pick the best elements, you know. They could have taken Legacy of the Force and turned it into gold if they took the best elements and scrapped it a little bit, you know, with the Jaina and Jason Solo story arc. And they kind of have. They've taken elements of the Old Republic and whatnot, but they just kind of cannibalized it. And I think Disney is trying to distance itself from what Star Wars... Make Star Wars Star Wars, 100%. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that here because... One thing I've talked about, Dash, you and I talked about it privately, but now we're doing this video publicly, is this whole meta-narrative in The Last Jedi. And I think people, when I talk to them about this, they seem to understand a bit more. Because I think when you go see this movie, 
you know, there's different kinds of fans. There's the casual fans who just want to see a movie with explosions and swords and, and whatnot. You got them. Then you've got, like, the fans who are really just Star Wars movie fans. Like, they really focus on just the, the eight movies in the saga, Rogue One. They don't really read the books or anything. Sometimes they'll read it on Wikipedia, but they won't really focus on it. Then you've got, like, the really hardcore fans that have YouTube channels that read all the novels or at least some of them that watch Rebels that do all these different things and I feel like the movie the meta narrative of the movie and we saw it time and time and time again from the minute that Luke threw the lightsaber away was we don't give a damn by your opinion we don't in other words it's like Disney is spitting in the face of the hardcore fan now the thing about that is when you say that because I'm a logical thinking person bro I'm not an idiot right you would think no that's not possible like why would they do that but this movie just everything from what they did with Snoke and by the way I should say that this video is going to have spoilers we should have said that at the beginning of the video but you should know by now I'm going to put a spoiler warning in the title um we're going to talk spoilers okay what they did with Snoke was it a cool twist yes was it a spit in the face of the theorists Kind of, because you literally took a character that you purposely, purposely, dash, made intriguing. He's all torn up. He has all this knowledge of the Emperor, of the Empire, of Vader. He's obviously a very, very adept in the dark side of the Force. And you kill him off without even telling us who he was. And their whole narrative is, well, it never really mattered. Well, then why did you make us think it mattered? And it's almost like... There's people out there, Dash, saying that they're blaming the fans. They're literally blaming and making fun of the fans for theorizing on Star Wars when that audience, the ones that theorize and do YouTube videos and write on Reddit and, you know, bloggers and, and just fans, those are the ones that you should be the most trying to please because those are the ones that buy everything. Nah. Everyone's going to go see Star Wars when it comes out. But the ones that buy everything should be the ones that you respect the most. I mean, that's the way if I see it. They don't. We've touched on this. They didn't respect The Force Awakens. And it was shown the first minute, right? I'm not the biggest fan of The Force Awakens, but it was a good Star Wars film. However, the whole buildup of the importance of Anakin's lightsaber, like the Excalibur, which, you know, J.J. Abrams had stated, him throwing that away was a metaphorical piece, just like when Kylo Ren says, let the past die, kill it if you have to. Um, I, I believe that that is Disney saying to the fans, we're killing the past, and here's why they did it, and here's why they don't care about hardcore fans. In fact, I think hardcore fans are a detriment in Disney's eyes. So... Explain that to me because you would think it'd be the opposite. You would you would think so, but who makes the most money? If you look at the raw numbers, and I look at the money first and move top down because that's the best way to understand Disney and its shareholders. They have now they've gone from making one movie every couple of years, you know, and big gaps where you had to put out novels and games and a lot of extra materials, and they had trouble making more toys outside of the Clone Wars. Toy franchise is $40 billion a year for Disney alone, and they've just taken on Fox, which means X-Men as well. $40 billion. Six, I believe, is going to Star Wars. Why would they make me uh, a hardcore R-rated Star Wars anime film that goes crazy about Snoke that's going to make them half a billion dollars when they can churn out one movie every year for kids who don't complain, who see it with their parents. The parents then go, go this is rad. This is so lighthearted and casual. Go buy them the toys, which makes the real money. And it's always been like that. And then they rinse repeat every single year versus a bunch of, you know, 20 to 50 year old dudes who complain. It's harder to please us. We are less uh, engaged consumers and we have an opinion which Disney has to deal with. Why not? Like, even if a kid hates Star Wars, he will outgrow the cycle in a couple of years and new films will come and they'll just rinse repeat them. Pablo Hidalgo said they closed the Clone Wars down because the fans aged out. And they were like, screw it, we'll just make a Rebels. And it's just going to keep happening. It's so smart to just focus on, say, like 8 to 16-year-olds. And every time they age out, there's going to be a new batch of movies and nobody cares. And they'll have kids of their own and it'll be lighthearted. They are training us to not be hardcore because that is way more work compared to reward that they get for just selling things that, you know, people buy toys. And you, I think it was you that sent me the clip when Ryan Johnson said, they said, what do you want, you know, 
people to do after they watch The Last Jedi. And he was like, go home and play with your toys. That is the prime directive of Disney at this point. I mean, I understand that, but I mean, the the older, I don't want to generalize, but I feel like you can still get away with that and still tell a good story. I just don't understand the logic in that because there have been so many great stories in Disney. Pixar has put together movies that are masterpieces. Coco is in theaters right now, Dash. And that movie will freaking bring you to tears. So I, I think that, th like, I don't understand that because, like, the logic, I don't get it. Because you can make a good Star Wars movie, a fun Star Wars movie with a great story, and just aim it towards all audiences and still introduce new ships and new characters and new armored Praetorian guards and do all that stuff and still sell toys while still making a good movie. I just don't think that even if you m merchandise the series, which George Lucas did with Return of the Jedi, I just don't think that that is enough of a reason to give you a bad story, you know? Why, why would you want someone to focus on a movie for five years, right, when... Han Solo is coming out in what? Is it May twentieth this year? May. May. Yeah. That two, that that. Two weeks. If, after if you're looking Avengers. at four quarters in the business year or what? Is it? Or is it four? Or is it two? Q two, Q one. They've got. It's four. So they want you to buy out as hard as you can, and they, obviously they're not going to put Han Solo out early unless that this is maximum profit. They want you to consume the Last Jedi and be so psyched and buy out everything that you can, then and then skip straight to Han Solo. The attention span just isn't there anymore. They used to have it where they would stagger it; you'd have to wait ten years for a DVD. Like they, just everybody is so here and now. I believe that Disney has just looked at maximum profit and said. This is the most profitable way and quickest way to, to make fans engage quickly, heavily, and then duck straight out. Okay, well let's look at let's look at the, the when Disney first bought this franchise. Now, I was on board. This was in 2012. I was on board. There's gonna be a sequel trilogy. George Lucas is not gonna be involved as much as he was before. Actually, now it's pretty safe to say he's not even involved at all, especially with Last Jedi, because look. I don't care what anybody says, including George Lucas. There is no way he could have enjoyed that movie because that movie literally changed the entire point of what Star Wars was when he was making it. There's just no way. I refuse to believe it. Just look at his interviews. You can just tell. I'm not an idiot. So, okay. Neither did Mark Hamill, though, for the record. People say, oh, Mark yeah, Hamill turned yeah. about face, but there are multiple clips on YouTube, go search them, where Mark Hamill was like, I first read the script and said, everything about this is wrong. This isn't Luke Skywalker. What are you doing? Then when the movie comes out magically, he's in promotional mode and he's like, oh, it's birds and bees and flowers and trees. Take his first statements at face value because we all felt the same. This doesn't feel right. And obviously he's drank the Kool-Aid. That's his job and he's professional, but I don't believe for a second that, that Hamill's bought in either. No, and, and also I agree with you 100% on that he, with that, but I'll, at the same time, he's still kind of gone out even recently and said he didn't agree with the script, but he said he would do the best job he could for Ryan Johnson, which I do respect. Uh, but the thing is, when, when Disney first bought the franchise, you know, I was on board. And then when Force Awakens came out, I saw a handful of people, not too many of them, talk about how this movie's actually, uh, you know, this this it's, it's a movie that is really about, you know, empowering women. Because, you know, that movie had four strong female characters. You had Princess Leia, you had Mas Kanata, you had Captain Phasma, and you had Rey. And, and people were saying that it was supposed to be this sort of, like, pro-SJW, anti-male movie. And I didn't see it that way. Because when you look at Force Awakens... Han Solo's a great character, has a great arc in that movie. Finn has kind of a decent arc, not the best one. And Poe is, is a hot shot start to finish. And Kylo Ren, you know, he's himself. So I never saw that movie as being like pro-female, anti-male. But when you look at Last Jedi, there, there are things in this movie that really bug me. Every male in this movie is either reckless or dumb or overconfident or arrogant. Snoke overconfident, arrogant, cost him his life. Kylo Ren is an emotional mess. Poe Dameron's reckless to where he won't even, like, you know, he, he's doing a mutiny on the ship to, you know, Vice Admiral Holda, who's this calm and collected woman. And, you know, there's, there's, this is starting to bug me because in this movie it was really prevalent. And then at the very end of the movie, which to me was one of the most insulting things they've ever done in a Star Wars movie, Finn's about to sacrifice his life. Roe blocks him. Ro, Rose, Rose, I was a Poe and Ro, I, I got mixed up there, Rose blocks him, and then he's like, why'd you do it, and she's like, 
rather than try to hurt the ones you hate, you should save the ones you love. And I'm like, that's exactly what he was going to do. He was going to self-sacrifice himself for the resistance. Like, well, how is that not saving the ones you love? Like, the message is all messed up. And it's like all the men in the movie are these, like, psychopaths and all the women are these calm, cool, and collected people. And it really showed in Last Jedi. Like, it really did. Then I read an article from Variety talking about how Vice Admiral Holdo is a representative of true feminism. And I'm just thinking to myself, why is this in Star Wars? Princess Leia is already a strong female character. Rey, already mm, a strong female I'm character. I'm going to disagree on Rey. Ray. Well, we'll talk about that. We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. But I'm saying like like she's, she's strong physically. Then Phasma, right? She's the leader of the Stormtroopers. You get what I'm saying, right? Like, you didn't have to create Haldo to be this, oh, look at this, men are dumb. I really came off that way here, Dash, man. It's politicized. It, it, it hurt the movie. Yeah, it, that's not what Star Wars is about. Star Wars has a little bit of politics, a little bit of religion. I'm going to have a little bit in there. That's what it is. But really, it's about a family struggle and about overcoming your obstacles and about, you know, the duality of making the right decision versus the wrong one. Like, that's what it's about. It's not about, like, men versus women. No, correct. Um, no? Star Wars has always been a political statement, but it's buried. You have to look for it. And I like that. I don't like mine transparent. And, I mean, the thing that pissed me off the most, like you said, about disconnects, Phasma novel, Phasma was amazing. She was brutal. I loved her. They made her a joke in the movies. And yet, you know... There is a huge inconsistency, but I digress back to the core issue. I think that Ray absolutely has been screwed um, and that there is an SJW take on her character. And the reason being, and I don't think that it's just political for Ray, I think that Disney are too afraid to hurt women still they they want to show strong women but they will not show them in pain ray only physically has been dinged by the lightsaber by snoke which was hilarious outside of you know knocking her out with a tap or um i guess the, the, remember the, the he knocked her out with by by kylo ren by using the force yeah but like a, a, first a tap but then she overpowered him quickly now I can, un I can take on board that, that she's super powerful and the Force had kind of chosen her. I don't care about that. If that's how the Force is manifested in like characters like Nomi Sunrider, I was on board. Nomi Sunrider saw her husband killed in front of her in a brutal way in a spaceport. Rey, and I, I will say this, the strength of a character can be based on the challenges they have to overcome. Luke got his hand that's cut right. off. He got checked hard for jumping ahead. Uh, Hayden Christensen, you know, got his arm cut off. Ray did not get force lightning burnt up or arm cut off or anything like that. And so it's really hard to, to digest a character like that because like I, my number one, when I put an example is Kill Bill. Uma Thurman was pregnant at the start. Her ex-employees and former lover beat the Christ out of her, nearly kill her, shoot her. And then from the rest of the movie, I'm on her side for her to kill every single person. Man, woman, I nearly said child, that's horrible. No, just men or women in her way. She fights 88 Asians called the Crazy 88 who are, you know, that's trained right. sword fighters. And I'm bought in. I was bought in at that point. I didn't care about how strong she was. It's because I identified with her. Ray had no real uh you know mountain to overcome she just did it so easily that you couldn't identify with her as a human being i felt that that was her flaw it wasn't the force it was that they weren't you know throwing the smack down on her and her doing that big comeback that you you know you root for the hero yeah you're talking about a, a protagonist has to, has to overcome adversity yes that's what you're referring to yeah and, and, and that's true every main every the, the the hero's journey that's what this whole thing's about Star Wars did it, you know, so many great, I mean, Lord of the Rings kind, kind of sort of did it, you know, all the great stories throughout history have done the hero's journey, you know, it's the oldest story in the book, but you're saying that, and I agree with you, that Rey has not really been challenged yet. It's like 2017. Her, she really has She's entitled. That I know that sounds crazy, but think about it. The mentality from the original trilogy and the prequels was that to be a great Jedi in the light, you have to train. That's the seduction of the dark side. Take easy, but it is corrupting and bad. Rey didn't have to train. It just was given to her and people were clapping like she deserves it. What? 
Je- Yo, it took Yoda 900 years. You know, Dooku fell to get more powerful because, you know, at the end of his life of being a Jedi, he realized he needed that power and that was the seduction. If the Force just willy-nilly just points at you, you get in a battle with a big bad guy and just say the word, the Force, and suddenly you go OP God level, that takes away all of the struggle, all of the heart, all of the desire to to grow into the Force. It just like clicking your fingers, that's not a great message to, to send to people. And if we talk about the the politicism of, you know, 2017, it is hyper political. Look, if you're a white male, you still you can be called anything under the sun or, or portrayed any way as the bad guy. And it's kind of kosher. Like it's it's OK to do that. And I think that's why you find that most white males are, are um part of the empire right that's the kind of safe part of it and then like you said the the men on the resistance are kind of idiots you know you and i both have talked about this i like great strong female characters from Kraya to even but you know mara jade in in the eu or even xana i mean in, dude or, or, or even like i said princess leia or even if you want to take a step further beyond star wars there's been so many dudes you know scarlet witch is relatively strong but i would say black widow and the mcu is pretty good or even you know the original to me when i was a kid not the original ever but when i was a kid it was ripley from alien i love ripley. Like, she was yeah. a badass okay let's talk about leia for a second yeah Han Solo, tortured by Vader. Leia was a 19-year-old girl for three hours in Bloodline. She talks about how she was tortured and two stormtroopers watched it. She got tortured in the first movie. People say Slave Leia was the worst thing that happened to Star Wars. It's the best thing. She was so strong. We respected her so much. And the idea of this abhorrent, evil, slug creature taking sexual advantage of her, which he did to Ula in the EU novels knowing that that looming danger was happening to her and she still dug deep into like you know to to survive had that will and killed the motherfucker like i'm like pro leia it's it's because it's not it's not because she's in like being sexualized it's because it didn't matter what you threw at her you put her in chains in a bikini she comes out and kills you for it and your whole posse that was the that was the struggle and that's why we attached to leia and ray it's like oh you picked up a lightsaber and you don't even want it like Okay, you know, I mean, it, it, and this movie, I think Last Jedi was an opportunity to really show us why she's so strong and to challenge her. The logical way to have written this story is that in part two, which is The Last Jedi, she loses to Kylo Ren. She beat him in the first one. This time we have a freaking full health trained by Snow Kylo Ren, which is what I thought they were going to do. He's going to beat her ass. And then in episode nine, she beats him. What's going to end up happening is, and we know this already, that episode nine, she's going to beat him anyways, you know, and he's going to die most likely. And that's it. Like, she beat him. So Kylo Ren's going to go 0-2 against her. And and that's just, uh, there's not much drama there. You know, you got to have, like you said, she should have... She should have been slashed in the back. In, In Force Awakens, if she got hit in the back like Finn did, I you wouldn't have had a peep out of me. I would have gone, wow, her force powers are unexplained. She's strong, but Kylo deuced her because you know he's known as the Jedi killer. He killed a whole temple of Jedi, and he's raw power. That's right. I would have been like, okay, holy shit, poor Ray. She got sliced in the back. How she's gonna come back from this? She should have a hundred percent. Yeah, but. Him. but- Yeah, but Dash, man, they gave you an out because Kylo was emotionally messed up. He had got shot with the crossbow. There was a good reason for her to have won that fight. But in The Last Jedi, we have a healed Kylo Ren. They should have rematched in that movie, and then a full-strength, undamaged Kylo Ren would be able to just dismantle her, like, with ease. And then she actually realized, okay, I'm not ready for this yet. Then an episode, you know, just like with Luke and Vader. But they don't want to have it be a remake of Empire Strikes Back, blah, 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 blah. Which, honestly, a remake of Empire Strikes Back would have been way better than freaking The Last Jedi. I mean, in my opinion. I know some folks didn't want that. Kylo Ren is what is the nemesis to Rey, right? And therefore... Her adversity and strength can be based off his own. That's why Luke was so appealing. I hated Luke as a person. Like in, um, say, A New Hope, you know, talking about blasting womp rats to get his jollies off and just complaining. It was his story arc and growth that made me like him, of course. However, seeing Vader as this unbeatable Frankenstein monster that wouldn't stop coming gave extra clout to Luke. Like how is he going to, to surmount this? They're making... Kylo, this half-sexy prince, 
brooding guy who's a half hero to you. And that's that detracts from Ray's story because as soon as he took off his mask and went, oh shit, he's become human. He was a faceless monster till he did that. And that's Vader didn't take off his mask and become human till the end of Return of the Jedi. Kylo did it and suddenly we're on Kylo's side as well. It's not a bad thing, but then all you had left was Snoke and they offed him so quickly you're like, there's no adversity for Rey that she can't, like, ain't no mountain high enough. Like, she's just, she, it, it killed both characters simultaneously because then you want to be like, why is Kylo going to die when you half redeemed him and he's trying his best? It, it's, it's a bit of a mess, dude. It, it's, it is a mess. And then you've also got the subtext of the animal cruelty stuff in the movie. Oh my God, the kids um, sweeping. Don't eat the Cinderella. Yeah. All right, let, uh, like, oh, I, wow. I don't want, like, fuck, dude, like that. And then what, 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 the thing about it, Dash, is I leave that movie theater, bro, and I'm thinking, am I the only one who saw this? And then I go on, on online, you know, just a couple days later, and I'm so happy because I'm not. Like, people see through Disney's bullshit, and the fucked up thing about it is they accuse them of doing this for Force Awakens, and I was against it, Dash. I was saying, no, they are not doing this. There's a reason why Ray, why Ray's so strong. You know, it's just a fe- I was actually telling people, it's just a girl main character, a female main character. Don't get mad at this. There's nothing wrong with this. You're a sexist if you think so. Right, and that's the way I still feel. If you have a problem with a f- strong female, that kind of makes you a sexist. If you know her being a female is is what, what bothers you, that's sexist without no, question. I, I, the problem is that in this movie, no, I was just gonna say what they did in this movie was they hammered all these subliminals in your head, and then they made this one really pissed me off. I did not pick up on this until my third viewing of Last Jedi. Poe is pretty much in this version of the story, not in Force Awakens, but in, in Last Jedi, he's freaking sexist. When Holdo shows up, he's like, Dude, that's not what I thought she would look like, AK, I thought she was a man. I did not even pick up on this until the third viewing. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? They're taking Poe Dameron, who is not sexist in any of the comic books, in, any, in, in, in Force Awakens or none of that shit, and they're making him into a sexist, bro? What like 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 is, is am I the only one? Dash, I'm like screaming in an empty room and nobody's listening to me, bro. Here's two things. First point, um, the reason why people got pissed off at Ray isn't that she's female, because again, so many people I think love Jaina Solo and Jason and their story. I think that the vocal minority, minority, minority give a shit that she's a girl. It's that she's a girl and therefore was treated differently and, you know, they made her overpowered. If they had, you know, given her a bit of more flaws and made her more human, like I said, if Quentin Tarantino writes a movie like Jackie Brown or, or Kill Bill with a female lead, I'm like, I'm all it. I knew nobody's going to do them justice. And so I think that people were more annoyed that Disney – puts in a female lead, treats them differently, and then goes, oh, what are you talking about? We're not. She's a strong female character, and you're the one with the problem. And people are like, you are clearly treating her different to a male character. That's why we're pissed off. But people having that divisive rhetoric helps Disney because when we're arguing about female or male or or black or white, like all of this ancillary bullshit that doesn't matter – People aren't critiquing the film. And that's that's what journalism is, unfortunately. It's devolved to in 2017. In terms of Holdo and your statement, this it's the dumbest. It, it It's so stupid with Poe, and here's why. And I'm going to read, uh, is it Laura Dern's statement on, on her character, if you don't mind. Oh, I know. I, I know where you're going with this. And I just want to say one thing, too. Her character actually, in a roundabout way, wound up being a dumbass because had she actually told Poe what the plan was, then they would have never sent Finn and Rose to Canto Bite. Then they would have never fucking dealt with DJ who wound up fucking them over anyways and telling the, the First Order where the transports were and killed more fucking people. So at the end of the day, they wrote themselves to a corner and didn't even realize they actually made her look like an idiot. <laughs> All right. Fuck this movie, bro. The more you see what I'm saying, the more you think about this movie, the more you want to say. I'm, I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you a little bit. I mean, it's not all bad, you know. Let's 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 be honest. We're, you and I are just we see the flaws and we're talking about them, not the good stuff at the moment. Um, no, no, there, there's good tons stuff. Of good right, stuff, we're just. I'm saying this. I know. Is not I'm just good. letting people know before I read this. So. Laura Dern quote said, "Ryan is saying something that's been a true challenge in feminism. Are we going to lead oh. and be who we are as women in our femininity?" 
or are we going to dress up in boys clothes to do the boys job i think we're waking up to what we want feminism to look like now i think that that's above and beyond wardrobe that's laura dern trying to project something uh political onto a character because here's the here's the problem with that statement about you know, feminism and saying, you know, she's a true hero for opening up those ideas. And it's this. Carrie Fisher's character, Princess Leia, has been a feminist icon, a strength in the face of adversity for 40 years before Holdo turned yeah. up. Holdo saying, yeah. people saying Poe didn't respect her because she's a woman is mind boggling, even if that is true, because of this fact. He worships well, Leia. He worships a woman. I know, he I... doesn't hate all women. He he worships Leia. He wants her approval. When she's gone, he thinks his ego steps in and says, I should be next. And then when he sees a, you know, Laura Dern's character steps in, he's like, Who's this? Who's this person who doesn't even, you know, hasn't been anywhere? I'm the hero. It was his ego. He worships a woman. If he hated Leia and then hated her, I go, okay, you know, maybe he's got a problem with female authority, but he lo he worships the ground she walks on. The amount of people that are grabbing Leia's hand in that movie is out of control, by the way. <laughs> no, I'm Dash, I know, but I'm saying I agree with you, but that's now not how he was written in Last Jedi. That's how he's supposed to be written, but you could tell you could tell they dash when he says that's not what i expected her to look like or no that's not what i expected dash bro that line i'm not i'm not an idiot ryan johnson that line is subtly him saying i thought it was a man dash bro they even stole that line from an old movie i forgot the you name know what of it. Like that's I, that's what I'm saying. I you're agree. right. Maybe, I'm not maybe, saying maybe you're wrong. Her, her hair wigged him out, and he's like, "What the hell?" She looks more like a dignitary than uh, a war leader. And you know, I mean, because Leia does dress more he boy said that. Boy, well, no, but I mean, people don't talk like that. I expected her to look like a dignitary. He'd be like, uh, "I don't expect her to look like that." Like, who is this? It's just like I didn't expect. Um, Jimmy, whatever his name is, Bail Organa, to be a puss bag, Jimmy yeah, to be a puss bag in a cape that he was, you know, watching little boys fight clones and falling out of, you know, George Lucas right, right, Jet Lucas. Whatever, like right. I didn't expect him to to be such, uh, you know, a coward in the face. I guess he's not really a coward, but you know what I mean. Like I expected him to be way more badass. And and when he's all dressed all regal, I was like, you know, fucking Alderaan. So I can see if they wrote him like that, if. If it is something of him being sexist, I, again, all the men, like you said, are portrayed as being inept and a little bit dumb. But that storyline with her, you fucking, I dare anybody to tell me this. In that day and age, with that amount of technology, why does a human being have to be at the helm of a ship if they're going to jump it into light speed through other ships? Why don't they program 60 X-Wings to just jump at light speed into other Starfleets? Why don't they use them as weapons and take people out of them? Use droids. Droids can pilot ships. That was the dumbest subplot I've ever seen. Why does she need to be at the helm of a ship to blow up another ship? And if they can do that, they have the technology, why don't they just send a fl an armada of unmanned ships and screw up the first order and jump out in one of those transports that was insane to me i was like what plot hole no, well not no that's not even that bad why would they send 20 bombers to take out one star destroyer when one one bomber could do it like they could have just sent one bomber and protected that one bomber you know what i mean like that was i thought that was kind of dumb it's not that bad but i mean I no it was rose's dumb, you know sister's I mean? uh story with the the button thing stop the movie dead i was like looking at my watch like this is not star wars happening right now and i knew that she was somehow related to another character of the plot and that they were drawing it out i'm like come on is this really necessary well what about the fact that rose fell in love with a dude who's in the resistance for like 12 hours bro what about that one let me you're you're finn I heard so much about you, and then she's in love with him. Come on, bro. Like that's bad. That's actually bad. So Rose, uh, to make her like a, a a strong character who's guarding a the pods, escape pods, and she zapped people. Three dudes that day, like electro shocked them, which is kind of messed up. You know, Finn's kind of got a rough run with that. Would they have put? Finn in that position where he was guarding the pod and Rose walked up and he goes, Hey, I've been looking for deserters 
are you deserting? And then zaps her. I don't think that they would do that on screen. That's the whole problem is that they're trying to project this idea of feminism and equality, but they won't treat men the same as women. They will not physically harm them on screen, but are happy to go carte blanche on dudes. It's kind of this weird double standard. But, you know, if you want people to accept them more, like accept them more, that's a horrible thing. You know what I mean? If you want people to see everybody as equals, you have to treat them as equals. You can't just say it and, you know, Speak out both sides of your mouth. Say one thing and do another. That's it's killing characters development, right? Like I'm, I'm happy well, that yeah, they're, it, they're introducing it, more women, yeah. uh, females, and, and minority characters. Like, get everybody. I want everybody to have somebody they can attach to in the gamut. The whole world. I want a Brazilian dude to see a character and go, "That's dope," or an Asian person to go, "Chirin and Wee is great," or me, you know, um, loving. I don't know why I'm attached to Saul Guerrero. That has no bearing anything i love saw guerrera but like i want everybody to have a place in star wars but i don't want them to pigeonhole people where you see a guy and you go he's white and british he's got to be a bad guy or she's cute and asian she's got to be a resistance member that who's never gonna hurt that's scary to me like just treat everybody equal yeah that's the point it's more so about treating everyone equally and i feel like if you're gonna do a subplot with a character who's like sexist I, th- I I figured the perfect idea would be Hux and Phasma because first of all they're both villains. Second of all, you kind of have this thing where you could have had Hux be kind of like, oh well, it's a woman under that, and then Phasma be like, you don't know who you're screwing with, you know, because Phasma's supposed to be supposed to be scary. You know, you could do that with the villains, I think, but with the good guys, we're supposed to love Poe. So if I'm a woman and I see Poe as being sexist, I'm not gonna like him as much anymore. You know what I mean? That's gonna be that, right? Uh, I mean, well, characters are flawed, and I mean, even Luke kind of was a little bit murdery of small animals, and I, get, I that gives them layers. But you're correct, like say in the book, uh, Phasma again. I can't sing her praises highly enough. They did her, they robbed her again in the freaking movie. She was a badass, and Brendel Hux, um, Hux's dad loved her and, and Hux kind of saw the value in her but not as much I would like somebody like like you said in the first order to underestimate her and her to check shit or for her to try and take over she seems to be more um adept at, at you know military obviously strategy combat she's a badass why doesn't she off him and become the number two for for Kylo instead of being this horrible subplot of oh I gotta fight Finn even though physically and uh in combat she's so much more uh lethal than Finn ever there's no way she, he should have won I thought she should have bit his throat out because the one takeaway from Phasma is that she's a survivor at any cost but it, but but Guess what, Dash? It doesn't matter because Star Wars The Last Jedi ignores all of that. Because Ugh. what I was trying to say at the beginning of all this is that the the problem with this new Disney regime, which I did not think was going to be a problem until I saw this movie, is that they're trying to sell you on all this extra stuff like books and comics, but at the end of the day, they don't give a fuck if you read it or not. Because if they did, if Ryan Johnson were actually talking to the story group and actually keeping an eye on what was coming out. Number one, Holdo would have acted a bit more like she did in the Leia book, which she, she had Chloe different. Number two, they would have understood the fandom wants a little bit more than just killing Snoke without telling us anything. Put a Snoke book out first before you kill him. That would have been smart, I think, you know, my opinion. And then number three, he would have, well, first of all, he would have known that freaking Ray and Poe already met, which I think is kind of a plot hole. But also... He would have known that Phasma was this big, strong warrior and wasn't going to go down to a guy like Finn who only had one mission under his belt. It just doesn't make any sense to me. She trained him. He beats her. It's like they're willing to have Ray. They're not willing to have Ray sell, but they're willing to have Phasma sell because she's wearing armor. Like, is that what it is? Right. That's so strange that they make her the strongest female, female character but always cover her face. I wanted the helmet to come off for her for her to headbutt Finn. I don't know. I love Phasma, but it plays into my whole uh, theory that Disney is not rewarding hardcore fans. They don't want you to go in having extra knowledge. That is, that's a huge takeaway. Theories be damned. Uh, the Force Awakens be damned, especially but extra yeah, but, content. But that's horrible. No, because because Dash, who, who's going to buy no, who's going to buy more um, merchandise? Is it the kids who can just digest it as one standalone piece of content, or is it the hardcores who are super demanding? They just want the kids and the families to go 
work together. They have identified hyper focused on one target demographic and audience. They're trying to bring in female consumers as well. And obviously minorities, because I mean, it's, it's Hollywood and it's mandated. So that they're, they're, they're ticking all the boxes, which is great. I want that to happen. I want everybody to enjoy it, except the one little sliver, which is you and me, the hardcore fans that have supported them for the last 20 something years. They, <laughs> they go, you're the guys that are bringing this ship down and you're the guys that we're going to ignore the most. And it is crushing. The problem is, dude, that now as a result of them treating people like that, and I don't mean just me because I, I am a hardcore fan, but there's people who we know who, have, who are way more hardcore than I am as far as like they buy all the books, they read everything. You know, Alex reads everything. I haven't got a chance to read everything. I just don't have that kind of time. You know, I'm talking about all the, like the mall stuff, everything. And I feel like those fans should not be made fun of. But when you watch The Last Jedi, it's like the entire movie is making fun of those fans. The movie is subconsciously, with that stupid meta narrative I keep bringing up, is constantly making fun of those fans. And you should not make fun of the fans who are buying the extra stuff because you're saying that it's all about families this and that but i guarantee you that those same families those five-year-old ten-year-old kids aren't buying the phasma book that book is for the grown-ups you know the thrawn book that's for the hardcore fans you're just pissing on them and, and that's why i think people were pissed off because the entire message behind last jedi the entire story was forget the past forget the jedi forget the sith forget anything you've been invested in for the past 30 years this is our story now. We're going to tell a story we want to fucking tell. And that's the end of it. And I found that to be very insulting. Not towards me. Because I'm not even that much of a... That, that into it. But towards people who actually invested. I find it insulting when a company disrespects its fandom. And that is bad. Like, that is bad. You know, you don't want to disrespect your own fans. None of them. Let the past die. It's not that hard to make a Star Wars Kill movie. Kill it if you have to. It's the only way you can become what you were meant to be. Ultra fucking profitable, baby. Well, here's what here's what I'm gonna kill. I no longer care about the fucking books. I'm not gonna read the fucking uh, the the Snoke book when it comes out or uh, Chuck Wendig puts out another book. I'm not gonna read that shit. I'm done wasting time reading these stories because the stories don't even fit with the movies at all. They don't. I thought they did. They don't. Sometimes they do. Most of the time they don't. You're not going to create a character and have me get invested in the character just to kill him off like a punk. I'm okay with Luke and Phasma and Snoke dying, but the way they died was a problem. Maybe not Snoke, but the other two. So, like, it's one of those things where, like, what they're doing is, to me, Dash, they're pissing away at those people. Like, because, because, dude, that Rotten Tomato score is not a hack. I have read the reviews. Bots don't leave reviews saying one of the worst Star Wars movies ever. Bots don't do that. This is not an accident that the movie got a low score. People have to get their head up their ass. There are problems here. People are insulted at this freaking movie. Disney had, and I'm tired of people think, thinking... I'm sorry, no, Dash. Go, go. I'm just tired of people not, not taking their opinion, not understanding there's actually a problem here. Look, I appreciate that, and sorry for nearly constantly cutting you off. We've got that passion train going. Where we're just trying to yell thoughts as they come in our head. Um, uh, no, I think right. Disney has been open... And, and I hadn't accepted it until this point. I'd lived in hope that Disney would serve the, the, the children first because of the profitability. They were going to induct minorities and women, which I want, you know, the fandom to, to spread out. And then once they'd done that yes. and they got everybody on board, yes. they would go into more like the hardcores and be like, guess what, guys? We have been working to bring everybody in as a profitable move and then bring everybody up together. What they have really been doing, and I just accepted it when watching the uh, Last Jedi, and I was like, "I'm gonna go into exile. This is, this makes sense." Is they've said, "Too hard basket for the hardcore fans, and and whoever has a voice of dissent, they will ignore and shun. Even people I know ignore and shun. Like they don't want to know me because I'm saying you know bad things about the Last Jedi because they don't." How would that make sense for them? Star Wars has retweeted everybody that said, you know, this is the greatest ever. They're never going to retweet a, a voice of dissent. They they can just, they That's can right. drown out the haters. Disney's so big, we don't exist to them. They can outlast us. It's like, okay, if this is a war of attrition, let's see how you hardcore guys go without any content um, for your age demographic for 20 years. And that's another trick that they use. 
they don't put out a TV show except for a kid's one like Rebels, and it could be mediocre, which Rebels for the most part was. It had a couple of standard episodes, but you're so happy that you get Star Wars again. You're like, oh, Jesus, I'm going to eat up whatever you feed me. This is the best thing ever. I've been in that train, but then, you know, over time I was like, wait a second, this isn't as good as I can't pretend it's good, but people don't want to hear you say Star Wars is bad. They want to be in that safe bubble of Star Wars is the best thing ever. It still is. And Disney is doing the fans justice. And it's just not true to me. I mean, it could be true you, to, to some people. Uh, if people love The Last Jedi, you know, more power to you. But to me, it's it's killed a piece of me and Star Wars this is the sickening thing people say Star Wars is for kids and Star Wars should be taken as such they love to do that when things are going their way but the truth is Star Wars started out maybe for kids but then it became a religion it became a way of life you, you don't hear that about freaking uh, Barbie or, or say Marvel like Star Wars has transcended something into a pop culture phenomenon that has taken over people's lives and you know people have just attached themselves to the idea of the force in, in a way that is so profound and above any, anything else so you, you know we don't treat it as such like just another oh it's a Thor Ragnarok movie it's a nice ride I'm going to exit out and be like I can't wait to see another you know Thor, Thor in the Avengers Star Wars is, is almost oh Star Wars is life Star Wars can be and it has that power and the expanded universe decided to open the universe and to give you every facet whether it be a bum on the streets of Mos Eisley Tatooine to uh Darth Plagueis conducting dark side experiments ripping people up or Bane who killed his own father by thinking a thought with the dark side you don't see the Sith in Star Wars anymore because that is it, it's it's rated you know ah right you can't you can't uh, I guess you can't, can't but no but you can't tell you can't tell the story of a Sith do it justice because there's death and murder and betrayal without going more adult and that's not Disney Disney is looking at a universe through a keyhole and it's saying anybody who tries to step out of these bounds is wrong and it's not a way of life it is just what we say it is it's a fun ride for kids and if you like it get on board if not piss off there's the door yeah and unfortunately uh, I, I'm just I'm heartbroken dash because I was so invested in all of this. I mean, and it, it really is their fault. It's not even, you can't even blame me because they're the ones who are fucking with us. They're building up all this shit with Snoke and the unknown region. Palpatine talks about the dark side being from there. Nothing at all in this movie about it. You know, the book's supposed to amplify the movies. I don't give a fuck about Mandalore or any of that bullshit till it makes it to a movie. Like, I care about what the movie kind of has given to other people, all the movies. And it's like the, the new canon is supposed to enhance the movies, but if they're going to ignore the stuff in the books or not have it help the enhancement, I'm just not going to care. Like, I'm just, and not that I'm not going to care about Star Wars, but I'm not going to get invested. I'm not going to spend money on the extra shit. I'm just not going to waste my time. And that, to me, is the problem, what you just said. It's literally become a waste of time now. So we should just look at these movies as whatever. We're always going to have the original trilogy, but it just... Last Jedi really let me down, bro. Like, this... All the political agenda, like, just constantly, like... Because here's the problem, Dash. We knew... Look, man. We knew before Episode Seven even came out that Luke was not going to make it out of this trilogy. We knew he was going to die. We knew that Han was probably going to die. I mean, I knew that. We knew Leia may or may not. We don't know yet. I mean, at this point, we still don't know the character, not the actress. And it's one of those things where, like, it's not about passing the torch. I just feel like they didn't pass the torch correctly. There is a correct way to pass the torch down to Ray, Poe, and Finn. And I felt last year I did not. Others disagree, and that's okay, too. That is okay. I just feel like it wasn't passed down correctly. And if they had not constantly hammered over the head how much better their movie is and how stupid the past was, I wouldn't have so much disdain for it. There's an article on Deadspin, list of the times Last Jedi told the older Star Wars movies to eat shit. And there's literally, literally an entire, like, three or four pages filled with all the times that Last Jedi, in my opinion, disrespected the old movies. And that's going to piss off the fans, dude. So you can't even sit there and say, oh, it's not really, people don't really hate it for this reason. No, this is why I don't hate it, because they think it's disrespectful to what they love. 
I mean, come on, it, like have some respect. I think I you brought up a good point of like, say Claudia Gray is a great novelist and she wrote Lost Stars, which had, you know, this boy and girl who started on both uh, the same area. One got picked up by Tarkin and suddenly was, you know, got a shine from Tarkin and they went into the Empire and, and the, the girl stayed with the Empire. The boy went with the Rebellion. It was a mixed story. However, Rebellion or Empire, it was layered and you would identify with both characters' choices and they humanize the empire. They're making the empire this this one-sided thing again. And, and like, say, Battlefront, the game, they just totally shit on that book. Like you said, there's a, a total disconnect. My favorite thing about Star Wars isn't the films, by the way. It's the books, which are disconnecting from the movies, but also the games. They've only put out two, and the rest are just microtransaction-y, like, mobile games. So oh, if they boy. made bad films forever and gave me two games a year, like the old days, like, I would, you wouldn't hear a peep from me. But that, because... They can open up and do more adult content in the games, but they're just like, nah, we're not going to do that. We're, we're going to, like you said, disassociate so much and, and you know, segregate, segment it. It's just, it's killing me. But here's the thing, the, the, a realization I had about me at the end of this, my final thought uh, when it comes to why I ended becoming a Star Wars YouTuber is that that's Disney's prerogative. I, uh, I have been entitled. Star Wars has given me so much and I love it, but I became entitled when I thought that Star Wars has to cater to my needs. Star Wars doesn't. It can shit on the fans. It can do whatever it wants. That's its decision. And I don't have to like it, but you know, if I don't respect it, I'm just going to be living in years of pain because there's not much that I can do to change that. I'm not going to be negative and scream at a wall or make hate videos. That's not in my nature. It kills me inside, but realizing and coming to, to terms with I've been entitled, I guess Disney win, they tried to bleed out fans like me, like I said, and just induct more um, malleable younger fans. But, you know, congratulations that they've done it. And I'm like, okay, this is what I've done. I have to make peace with it and I have to move on because they're not going to be who I've seen in the past. And people who are too young or, or disinclined to go check out EU, it doesn't exist to them. So they don't know what they're missing out on in the first place. And, and I have to be okay with that. It's just, like you said, it's a real bummer. It really stings. Yeah, they, they should have never tried to get us so invested if they weren't going to show respect. That's my opinion. Again, that is just my opinion. If you want to make a bunch of freaking kids movies, great. Like, I'll, I'll watch them, but th I'm not going to care past that, you know. And no matter what, The Last Jedi had a lot of problems, dude. And I think people need to get up, get their heads out of their asses and really listen to people on both sides. On both sides. Because, yes, there's a lot of good in that movie, too. The movie's not completely horrible. There are things I hate about it, but it's not completely horrible. And I think they have to listen to the criticism and say, okay, you know what, you're right. Or I don't agree, but that's a good point. And thankfully, a lot of my friends have done that. So if you're out there, you should, no matter what side you're on, listen to the other person because they might make a point. That, yeah, that's, might, that's really you know? the hardest thing is the other fans being so exclusionary and jumping down your throat. When you're like, I don't like The Last Jedi, and they treat you like a leper. I'm not treating people who like The Last Jedi like they're scum or, or villainy. No, I, I'm glad. Uh, yeah, I'm like, like I'm like, I Shit. wish I liked it, dude. Like, I get it. I'm not like, you're ignorant. You need to read a book. I'm like, no, you know what? Uh, there's people I respect that love the movies, and, and that's absolutely fine. Um, but would like that respect shown back because criticism is the only way to grow critique so many people um take it personally these days they're like oh you don't like the last jedi therefore you you know my enemy you know so many people have this identity way if you're not with me then you're my right, enemy. identity politics so it's like oh you not you, you know you're not citing me on xyz I, I like i don't i try and see everything at you know from other people's perspective because you grow from it if i say the last jedi the hyperspace thing is bad and then they look at it objectively and go you know what next time we're not going to make that decision i've helped them if if the majority of people like it well then you know i've learned that people that's what they want like there is a lesson to be learned in everything and shunning that lesson and shutting people out that is when you create an echo chamber and that's dangerous because the day that you don't like something and you get shut out it's going to be a cold ass day right you're going to be like holy crap maybe i should have listened more so i don't know yeah, no, let's, 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 a lot of our friends like the movie and I haven't fought with any one of them. You know, everybody who we met 
at Celebration, a lot of them like the movie. I, I have no issue with them at all. You know, you we shouldn't. And I think it all comes down to whatever direction or what, what you think Star Wars is. If you think my problem with the movie was, besides the technical stuff, was the writing of Luke Skywalker's character and the meta narrative. They got rid of the meta narrative, get rid of that stupid Disney bullshit, and just made a good Star Wars movie and just, you know, kept it like maybe the same story beats, but just changed some things here and there and not made Luke Skywalker uncharacteristic. I would have probably liked the movie more. You know, but some people say, well, Luke changed because, well, he got old and characters de-evolve over time. I respect that opinion, but it does go against what Luke Skywalker is and what his portrayal was in the original trilogy. I just find it very hard to believe that Luke Skywalker would become that when there's no reason for him to become that. And that was what hurt the movie for me. No, I, I concur in, in that point. I think that less transparency... Um, by politicizing it and and trying to just make a Star Wars film versus a Disney film is something that you know we always hope for, and that they they had made a lot of good progress and there were definitely a lot of good beats, but it was off and it's pretty easy to articulate. And like you said, um, th like I mean the fact that the word feminism is, is being pointed into to the the storyline where it just uh, it's needless it, it's kind of telling of the times i guess yeah it, it, this is a bad time right now to make these kind of movies because the whole all of hollywood is so wrapped up in doing these political you know satires or, or reflections of reality that you forget that it's supposed to be a fantasy story in a, a long time ago in a galaxy far far away i don't want to go to canto bite and be reminded of things that are going on in the real world. That's not why I pay a ticket to see Star Wars. I mean, maybe that's just me, though. Maybe I'm behind the time. Maybe the movies all have to have this deeper fucking meaning about the world and a reflection of society. How about I just get some a story about a family? That's what Star Wars is at its core anyways, you know? So, anyways, thanks for being here, bro. I appreciate you. We, we've talked for an hour. I can't believe it. I can. It. I had to get this off my chest. I said that I was going into exile, and I'm kind of limping out because I just... It, 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 when the attacks, the personal attacks, uh, I mean, just the divisiveness of this movie is something I never anticipated. Good or bad, I love Star Wars fans. I'm intensely proud of the fandom, and it's not what I wanted at all. And so I think, you know, stepping back is, is all that you can do, but I needed to get this off my chest because you and I had been talking at length, um, and I really appreciate that. You're the only person who picked up the phone and said, it wasn't like I agree with you, but I, I want to talk to you about this because it's kind of rocked me. Everybody else is like, I don't want to hear from you. I don't want to hear about, you know, any of this divisive stuff. And I, I definitely, you know, it, it's the time where, where we should be coming together as, as fans and kind of discussing openly. But I guess that's not what we're doing. So I really, really appreciate you hearing me out, dude, because I, I needed this. Well, no. And like I said, I, when I walked out of that movie theater after hearing all the critics reviews, I thought I was the only one who had problems, and I guess you did too. And and it's fucked up because if you're out there and you're stupid enough to believe that Dash or myself don't love Star Wars, I mean that's that has to be the stupidest thing ever. Because I mean, come on, like, do you not know who we are? Like, that's just dumb. It, it's the it, the fact that this movie pissed us off is because of our love of Star Wars. Because we felt like we put more love in it than they did, as far as the story goes, not not the entire movie. That's the way I see it. I feel like the movie was passive-aggressive towards people like us, and that's not right. Look, the one good takeaway, I want to end on a nice note, is that 2005, uh, I saw it with my dad. It's one of the best bonding moments. I don't have many memories of like really bonding with my dad but uh, as a kid, but you know, I watched that with him together in the theater and we had a falling out. I didn't talk to him for nearly 10 years. And so we came together and watched The Last Jedi. So good, bad, or the ugly, you know, the family element and aspect of Star Wars is what what is bound it to me. You know, it's kind of imprinted on my DNA, my soul. It's a part of me and it always will. And so I'm thankful for that aspect a hundred percent. Yeah, I agree. And I, I grew up with the movies too. And we'll always have that original trilogy. No matter what they put out there, they can't take that away from us. So thank you again, bro. And thanks all of you for listening to this for so long. I appreciate it. And uh, hopefully you understood kind of what the problems were with this movie. You know what I mean? That these were the issues with the film. That, you know, it's not because it didn't go our way. It's because it didn't go the way that Star Wars goes. You know, it's just not Star Wars. But Hopefully with episode 9 they'll fix something. I mean, but we'll talk about that some other time. So, thank you and we'll talk to y'all later.